We have a search warrant. Open up. But do you have to? The Fourth Amendment is supposed to protect us against unreasonable searches and seizures. So let's talk about how you should handle search warrants so you can win in court. Do the police even have to knock on your door? Not in most states. There are a few states that prohibit no-knock warrants. Virginia is on that very short list. But in most states, the police can seek a no-knock warrant as long as they can prove that there's a credible risk that evidence may be destroyed or someone might be endangered by the police announcing their presence. But if they do knock, do you have to answer the door? Does the Fourth Amendment protect you here? To answer that, here's the quick 30-second history lesson. Before the American Revolution, English officials carried around these writs of assistance. They were blank checks that let officials such as customs officers or military officials search anyone, anytime, and anywhere. It was a blank check empowering that person to search. When Charles Paxton's writ expired after King George II died, the ensuing court battle for Mr. Paxton to renew his writ as a customs officer sparked major outrage among the American colonists. Our right to be free from these unreasonable blank check searches is frankly one reason why we rebelled from the English in the first place. So do you have to open the door if the police knock and say they have a search warrant? Yes, unless you want to buy a new door. The Fourth Amendment protects us against unreasonable searches and seizures. And so the process laid out for the police to seek and obtain a search warrant and then come execute it at your home makes their actions so-called reasonable. After the police announce they have a warrant, they can force entry into your home. Now that you're face-to-face -face with the cops, you have to remember the first rule of Flushi Freedom Club. Don't talk to the police. While a search warrant may entitle the police to search for things and even seize them, and it even lets them look around your home in the process of the search and seize other things that are contraband in plain view, the Fifth Amendment still protects you. Talking to the police hurts you. So invoke the Fifth Amendment, shut up, and call your lawyer. Now you may be saying, why do I need a lawyer if I'm innocent? because the police have come into your home with the authority from a judge or a magistrate saying that they can enter your home or your business premises. You have a problem, even if you think you're innocent. You need a lawyer. At this point, can you physically resist or stand in the cop's way? You technically can, but that's probably going to be considered obstruction of justice, and it will likely get you arrested, whether or not the police find anything during their search. The best time to fight a search warrant is not while the guys with guns are in your home. That's the time to stand back and document what they're doing. There's likely nothing to stop you from filming from the sidelines. But what about the actual search warrant document? Are the cops supposed to hand you a copy of it? Maybe. Virginia law was actually recently amended to require the police to provide a copy of the search warrant and the affidavit that supports the search warrant to the owner of the premises before they begin searching. If no one's home, they're required to post a copy in a conspicuous place at the premises where they search. But this is a very state-specific question. Remember, the Fourth Amendment covers everybody in the United States, but it doesn't give a lot of details about how it has to be implemented on a state level. So therefore, a lot of these issues are controlled by specific state laws depending on how your state has implemented search and seizure. Unless the search warrant is sealed for some reason, you should at least get, be able to get a copy from the court where it was issued. Searching a home without a search warrant for that home is illegal, right? Let's check the Fourth Amendment. So it's supposed to be illegal, but there's a loophole so big you could drive a fleet of bearcats through it. This loophole is called the good faith rule. The courts have established a rule that allows the government to use seized evidence against you anyway, even if a warrant was deemed faulty later on, as long as the police acted in good faith when relying on the warrant. Whoops, it looks like we goofed. Our search warrant was to search suite B, but you actually live in suite A but we're still searching anyway. Let that sink in. Even if the police are dead wrong, the courts are likely to allow that to go forward as long as they acted in good faith, whatever that means. And what's even crazier than searching your home is the police can also get a search warrant for parts of your body. I see this often when dealing with DUI cases where a blood draw is ordered pursuant to a search warrant. In many jurisdictions, if you refuse the DUI breath test, the cops take it up a notch by seeking a search warrant to literally seize your blood from your arm. Some states even have a cheeky name and call this a no refusal policy or no refusal weekend. So can you refuse a search warrant for a blood test? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> this gets tricky. You don't have to let the nurse stick the needle in your arm. And most nurses are not going to do so while the police restrain you physically at the hospital. Our local hospitals where I practice actually require you to sign a consent form waiving civil liability in case they injured you during the process of the blood draw. The crazy part is the legislature of Virginia has adopted a statute that specifically says no one shall be required to waive civil liability pursuant to a blood draw for a DUI. How do we reconcile the fact that the hospital policy says you have to waive civil liability to comply with a search warrant blood draw, but the legislature of Virginia says you never can be required to waive civil liability to comply with a DUI search warrant blood draw. I know what we do. If you refuse, they charge you with obstruction of justice and let the judge sort it out. That's essentially what happens. Unfortunately, there's a recent Pennsylvania case upholding an obstruction conviction under precisely these facts. Personally, when I have clients charged with this, I emphasize the difference between physically standing in the police way at your house, trying to stop them from physically searching your home, versus simply refusing an affirmative consent at the hospital. There's a giant difference to me, and I would argue in front of a jury, I think you have a strong chance that a jury is not going to consider that obstruction of justice. I still advise my clients to fight about this kind of thing in court, not in the hospital. If you're fighting against men with guns, you're likely going to lose. For even more expert advice about how to handle the police showing up at your door, check out this video. And remember, don't talk to the police.